Uh, last but not least, we have Professor Stu Friedman. He's got more Management 100 fans than the Beatles and once famously facilitated a conversation between a Wharton undergrad and a Wharton MBA student. The one, the only, Professor Stu, work hard, play hard, Friedman. What? <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, I have a question for you. What do college seniors think about their choices for their future careers and their families? Maybe some of you are in that position right now. Well, that's what I want you to think about here in this next five minutes. And I want to tell you something about what we've discovered. Now, if you would have asked me when I was graduating college uh, 40 years ago, 1974, what would I be doing in my future? I, here I am preparing for playing at my college graduation with my band. I don't know that I would have been able to answer at that time anything intelligent about what I would be doing in the future. Uh, and I certainly would not have thought that 20 years later, in 1994, I would be hosting a work family seminar uh, with a group of business leaders, government officials, and thought leaders here at the Wharton School. Um, but how did that happen? Well, I, I, I did cut some of my hair, yes. Uh, part of what motivated that event occurring was my meeting my child for the first time, which happened in 1987. So yeah, there we are, nose to nose. And uh, that, that created a whole shift in what I thought I would do with my life and my work. And so I started the Work-Life Integration Project. And that's what I want to talk with you about, some of that research. So this is an ongoing research project that looks at the Wharton community and our lives, our interests, our values, our hopes, and our dreams. Um, it tw uh, 15 years ago, I published this book, which looked at about 900 uh, alumni going back into the 60s. That was a cross-sectional study. What we're talking about now today is uh, three samples. The class of 1992, when they graduated, um, the class of 2012, when they graduated, and what we are now working on but haven't reported yet is the class of 1992, 20 years later. So we're going to be looking at the cohort effects, the comparison of these two generations, and it's really the cliff notes, the three minutes on the, the baby bus, which is a book we published a couple of years ago to describe the results of this study. And the name of the book comes from this finding, which is a response to this question, do you plan to have or adopt children? Something maybe some of you are thinking about. Back in 1992, 79, 78% of Wharton seniors said yes. In 2012, wow. it went down to 41 and 42%. So I scratched my head and thought, well, that can't be right, but it is right. Uh, so the, the, and it's not just Wharton. It's, it's a universal, it's a, it's a national trend. So the, the baby bus story is why that has happened, and that's what I want to share with you here. Um, so what's changed? Well, lots has changed, of course. Uh, early on, people like you are more indebted. You're, you're, you're moving faster through different jobs. You're smarter about what it takes to succeed in the business world. But you're also more absorbed with work than uh, the previous generation and more narrowly focused on just a couple of set of industries in the class of 1992. At the same time, your aspirations for hierarchical advancement are lower than that class and also with your family lives. I want to find something that's meaningful. I don't want to just be making the big bucks and you know, doing something that I hate and becoming a person who I don't like. You know, I don't mean to sound like I, I want to you know, change the way that the earth rotates, but I, I, I just want to do something um, that I feel is meaningful, and that can be a bunch of different things. All right, so that's a big part of what's changed. Let me tell you now the highlights of why men are uh, planning to, less likely to plan to have kids. One is, how can I be an involved dad and have a great career? So young men are expecting that their spouses are going to be engaged full time in their careers, and so they um, ex expect to have more conflict between the different parts of their lives. Their values are different. They uh, don't see themselves as primary breadwinners necessarily. Uh, and uh, to the extent that young men today feel indebted or are indebted, they had loans during school, they're also less likely to plan to have kids of their own. The story is different for women. Um, there's, there seems to be a conflict between serving humanity through work that does social good and having children of your own. I don't see how I can do both. Uh, young women who are more engaged in social and professional networks uh, are less likely to plan to have children of their own, almost as if those networks are a substitute. Um, and then there's less compulsion to to, to have children based on changing norms and expectations for what young women can do. There's more freedom to choose not to become 
a mother. And then there's the issue of, I have to wait until I establish my career. Uh, the good news in this, it sounds like a sad situation because people still want or see a full life as having children in it, but they don't see how they can do it. The good news, some of the good news here is that men and women are more aligned now in how they think about the relationship between work and family in their careers and in their, in their families. So uh, you can see men are now more egalitarian. They're more likely to agree with the statement, two career relationships work best when one partner is more advanced in his or her career. They're less likely to agree with that now. And women are more likely to. So men have become more egalitarian, uh, less uh, so for, for, for women. There's a revolution going on. And you're all a part of it. We're all a part of it. And there are a lot of things that you, we can do to make positive change in our society. Strengthen the infrastructure of support. There's changes happening at the organizational level. And at the individual level, there are things that you can do to learn how to lead the life you really want to lead. Men leaning at, at home helps women advance and also advances men's career and life objectives. Let's talk just really quickly, what can we do to change the infrastructure in terms of social policy? Provide world-class childcare. Make leave universally available. Relieve students of debt at the level of organizations. Increased flexibility. This is not a women's issue. It's a human issue that has social and economic consequences. Provide support for childcare and undo the culture of overwork. Learn what it means to lead the life you want by understanding what matters most to you, being real, what matters most to the people around you, and continually experiment with how you get things done, questioning the status quo and striving to discover new ways of being the person you want to become. And I've written about this in a couple of books, which you can check out. Anybody know Nathan Fleetwood? He said in my class a couple of years ago when I asked, what's your dream job? Stay at home, dad. All right, that happened. The question is, what choices will you make? And that's the question I'll leave you with. Talk about it. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends. Talk to your employers. Change the conversation. Check this out at the Wharton Work-Life Integration Project. Thank you.